Card cartilage. Finally, we get to cartilage. Oh, where do I begin? I used to be a cartilage biologist. Um, cartilage. Okay, so bone is great at withstanding compressive forces and it's very rigid. Uh, cartilage is also great at withstanding compressive forces but it's flexible. So it's similar to bone, but used in different circumstances. It's a great building block. Um, tendons and ligaments are like ropes. They're great at withstanding tensile forces when you pull them apart. That'll come back later. So we'll have a look at cartilage under the microscope. Uh, we'll look at the cells. We'll talk about the extracellular matrix and how it's arranged so that it's very good at withstanding those compressive forces. Now we find cartilage between the ribs and the sternum. We find cartilage covering the ends of joints that are gonna articulate like in synovial joints. We find uh, a flexible form of cartilage, elastic cartilage in the outer parts of the nose and the ear and a more normal cartilage in other parts of the nose. We find, we find a fibrocartilage in the intervertebral discs and in the pubic symphysis, uh, in the labrum around uh, some of the joints and things like that. So there are cartilages throughout the body which one should we look at? This is quite a nice slide. Uh, this is the trachea of an animal, very small trachea. So we have what's called hyaline cartilage forming the cartilage rings in the trachea and that cartilage is keeping the airway open. Um, but this still is a flexible tube. Uh, we also find this hyaline cartilage forming the major structures of the larynx. Uh, the hyaline cartilage is also what we find covering the surfaces of synovial joints, but we call it articular cartilage because it's a little bit special. Anyway, um, this I think, well, we'll have a look. I think this has got a bit of alcyon blue on it, which is why I think it would be quite nice to have a look at. Um, let's see. There we go. Oh, that's bright. So can you see, uh, we're looking at the trachea, which has got a C-shaped ring of cartilage keeping that central airway open. And look, it's, that's why it's the C-shape. It's connected there at the back. So this is, this is, it's flexible. The esophagus sits at the back and anyway. Anywho, now if we jump up to this is um, 100 times magnification to my eye. This is a 10 times objective lens and 10 times eyepiece lens, giving me 100 times magnification. Now what we're seeing there is we're seeing that ring of cartilage. We're seeing the cells of the cartilage, which are mostly chondrocytes, and they're living in little spaces, uh, lacunae, and those spaces are within the extracellular matrix. So it's the extracellular matrix that's looked after, that's maintained by the chondrocytes that's special to cartilage. And then either side of the cartilage, of that hyaline cartilage, we can see a perichondrium. When we looked at bone, we saw that it was covered in a periosteum. Here we have a perichondrium doing very similar features. And then as we move that away, that's the respiratory epithelium and that's the airway. So we're interested in the blue stuff. Like I say, I think... So uh, you can use a toluidine blue, you can use what a methyl blue, and you can use an alcyon blue, which stains the cartilage matrix quite nicely. Let's jump up to what is essentially 200 times magnification to my eye. Be a bit different to you, depending upon what size screen you've got. And this is all we're looking at. It looks very simple, doesn't it? Now, the extracellular matrix, the matrix around the cells, here we find type 2 collagen, this is a very long fibril, and some other collagens managing that collagen. So this is mostly type 2 collagen we find here, whereas in bone we find type 1 collagen, and in other connective tissues of the body like ligaments and tendons we find type 1 collagen. Uh, they're different fibrils. Here we're finding mostly type 2 collagen. And also in the matrix there, we've got glycosaminoglycans, which are essentially a chain of sugars, a chain of disaccharides. And we've got proteoglycans. The, the predominant one is agrican. A proteoglycan is a protein core, which all those glycosaminoglycans attach to. Now, the reason that's so important is that that pulls water in. So it pulls water into the extracellular matrix 
and then the type 2 collagen kind of makes a mesh work holding all those molecules in, molecules in place. So the water gets pulled in and then when you compress the cartilage it squidges because it's, it's a gel, right? It's a, it's a, there's water in there and it's that that's withstanding the compressive forces but the collagen's holding everything in like a mesh bag. If you took the collagen away everything would just get squished out. So the type 2 collagen and the proteoglycans and the glycosaminoglycans work together to give cartilage its, uh, its function. That's how it all works. And there's something else we can see here. Do you see any blood vessels? Do you see any nerves in there? Cartilage is famously avascular and aneural. There are no blood vessels within the cartilage. Now there are blood vessels around the cartilage. There are blood vessels on the uh, on the airway side, there are capillaries there. So chondrocytes um, are pretty happy with a low partial pressure of oxygen. They've got pretty low metabolic requirements. So the gases and the nutrients for the cells have got to diffuse through that extracellular matrix and then the waste metabolites have got to diffuse out through that extracellular matrix to the capillaries. So there's, there are no blood vessels within the hyaline cartilage and likewise there are no nerves either. So Joint pain isn't usually directly, well it's not directly because the cartilage has been injured, it's because other structures that are sensitive to pain in the joint are triggering that pain as a result of damage to the, uh, to the cartilage, for example. Um, okay, so I started on probably the nicest spot. We can see, like I say, how there's a pale blue staining, which is the extracellular matrix, or the ground substance it sometimes gets called. And we can see um, the chondrocyte, we can see its nucleus inside the lacuna, and there's a slightly uh, darker staining ring. So those are all chondrocytes. So like bone, where we had osteocytes that had surrounded themselves with bone, in cartilage we've got chondrocytes that have surrounded themselves with cartilage. Now if you look to the... Um, the perichondrium side, we're seeing cells but they look a little bit flatter. These are likely to be chondroblasts. These are going to be like the earlier stages of the chondrocytes. So they're coming from the perichondrium. So the perichondrium's got a couple of layers. The outermost layer will have fibroblasts and will be a very fibrous layer and the inner layer will have progenitor cells that will make chondroblasts that will become chondrocytes. Similar to bone, right? But different. Okay, so this is your classic hyaline cartilage in the trachea. Um, this is the same sort of cartilage, like I say, you'll find in the larynx, that you'll find between the ribs and the sternum. Uh, the articular cartilage is a little bit specialised, but very similar. Um, hyaline cartilage, fibrocartilage would look similar, but you'd have... It would be more fibrous, funnily enough, and you'd have type 1 collagen fibres in there. So, if cartilage is good at withstanding compressive loads, and tendons are very good at withstanding tensile loads, if you have a tendon that goes over an edge, it's now being compressed. So that tendon, at that point where it's being compressed, will change and will form fibrocartilage. And we'd find a cartilage like this forming, but it would be, it would have more fibres in it. It would be like a dense fibrous cartilage. It would be a little bit of a mix between the cartilage and the fibrous cartilage. Menisci in the knee joint, um, the labrum of the glenohumeral joint, uh, the annulus fibrosus of the intervertebral disc, um, the, um, in the pubic symphysis there, there's a fibrocartilage uh, bit in there. Those are all good examples of, of fibrocartilage. Whereas elastic cartilage, again, very much like hyaline cartilage, but we'd have elastin fibres in here. To see them you'd need to use a, a silver stain probably. So you'd have elastin fibres, which makes everything a bit more elastic. So those are the three types of cartilage. Now the other fun thing that cartilage does is it's a precursor to bone. Um, so endochondral ossification, chondral refers to cartilage, endochondral ossification, ossification turning to bone, um, endo on the inside. Endochondral ossification, 
um, is the process by which a cartilage precursor for the bone is laid down and then slowly over time that cartilage precursor becomes bone. That's something we'll look at on its own separately but I've got a developing, uh, a developing joint here, an early joint. So we can, we can have a look at um, the early articular cartilage here but we can also have a, we'll probably see endochondral ossification happening. And again, this has got the same, same sort of colours. Um, so there's bone. Um, that's the growth plate. That is um, cartilage becoming bone. It will need more time dedicated to it. So we'll do that at a different time. So the growth plate, where a long bone grows, is a form of cartilage. And then we've got more cart well, more bone. We can see bone marrow. And then the joint's a little bit all over the place there, just a plainer section. But there we go. There's the surface of the joint. So let's jump up to 100 times magnification. Oh, it's a little bit of a folded section. But that's, well, it, this is a, like a, a developing articular cartilage. Um, an adult articular cartilage would look thicker and there would be fewer cells and more extracellular matrix. But again, you can see on the surface we've got those flat cells. And cartilage is great for articular cartilage because it makes a lovely, smooth, friction-free surface. Um, and then we can see that cartilage, as we go deeper, meets the bone. So the cartilage is an interface for the two, jo the two bones to articulate against each other with, rather than bone on bone. Um, and, like I say, if we just if we slide over there, that is um, the beauty that is the endochondral, uh, that is the growth plate, that is endochondral ossification in a developing long bone. I did it for my PhD, so anyway, okay. So that's it, pretty simple. Now, articular cartilage is really important because with diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis, it... Uh, it gets it gets uh, broken down. You don't you don't wear your joints away. If you if your biomechanics change, so you overload a point, you can damage the cartilage. But osteoarthritis is a disease process that removes articular cartilage, and it's really important because when you lose the function, when you get pain using a big joint like the knee, that changes your lifestyle. You move less, so that has other health implications and what have you. Um, now, articular cartilage is the chondrocytes you see sat inside the lacunae do sense load. They sense various forces applied to the cartilage. And their job is to maintain the extracellular matrix so they can sense that load, respond to it, and make more extracellular matrix. So runners don't wear out their knees. Runners actually get thicker articular cartilage at their knee joints because they're loading the joints well so the cartilage responds because it's a living tissue and uh, makes a thicker, healthier cartilage. Um, walking has a, has a similar effect. Um, so we've seen the chondrocytes in their lacunae, surrounded by the extracellular matrix, which is filled with glycosaminoglycans attached to a protein core, making a proteoglycan that holds onto the water the type 2 collagen fibers, like a mesh bag, hold all this together as the water's pulled in here. And this becomes a, a very good tissue for withstanding compressive loads. Um, but it's also a little bit flexible, unlike bone, because it's not calcified. All right. Cartilage. That's all you need to, uh, all you need to know, I should think. See you next week.